Hello, and welcome to another week at the bungalow. This week's job, tiling main roof. But to start with, the windows have arrived, or the roof lights have arrived for the flat roof. These are the windows going over the bathrooms on the two en suites. Uh, just plain glass, double glazed glass roof lights. So nothing too stressful. Bonded down onto the upstands that we created when we did the flat roof. And then marked out and screwed down into place. Done sort of evenly along each edge. I mean, we, we're putting quite a lot really, 12 screws into these what can only be described as very small windows. So I don't think they're ever gonna ever gonna shift, not if they're not, not unless they're gonna take the roof with them. And then there's nice trim pieces to go on just to tidy it all up. Pretty neat, I think you'll agree. And then on to the next one. Exactly the same as before. Stuck down, screwed in, and then trim pieces on. So as we finish off the second one of those, we move on to the main job in hand. Which is tiling the roof. So we're reusing the tiles that we took off previously. You would have seen a few episodes ago. We've had to buy a few extra tiles uh, in as much as we've had to buy the tile and a half you can see there on the corner. These are clay replacements because we couldn't get the originals. The originals hark back to the 1950s. And so we couldn't get anything exactly. So we've gone with the sort of discoloration colour of the main tiles to fill in with the edges. All of the um, valley tiles we managed to keep hold of, didn't break any. I think there was one broken or two broken when we did it, so we had to source those locally, but we managed to get those uh, reclaimed because obviously when people take roofs down those are the sort of things that survives but the tile and a half always sort of get sacrificed because they're the ones that are concreted into the edges so they're always a struggle to get hold of unless they've uh, unless they're still making them so as we put them back on we're cleaning them off as much as possible uh, they were all covered in moss from where the bungalow had been overgrown by vines and various other organic as so i were cleaning the moss off Get them a scrape over. Want it to look tidy, but don't want, look, want, want it to look brand new. So all of the edge tiles are screwed into place. And they're the first to go on, so we can then fill with the rest. So we have our cloaker tile along the bottom, and then you can see our first run of full tile over the top of that. That's to give the waterproofing underneath that first tile. So we progress along, cleaning off the tiles as we go, giving them a sweep off, getting rid of the remains of the moss. Most of the tiles were stored, stacked up on pallets, just on the driveway. We didn't have the space on the scaffolding to keep them all up in the, up in the air. We had other stuff we had to get on with, bricklaying and everything else. So they had to be removed from the scaffolding when we took them down, which was a bit of a pain. So you end up having to lump them all back up the, the ladder, get them back into place. So this is where the cuts occur, as far as we're concerned. So this is the valley for the other ridge that comes out the front of the bungalow. So we pretty much start at the far end, as you saw, with the tile and tile and a halves. And then you progress quite happily along the roof. Full tiles all the way along. We have some lines that we put in uh, periodically just to make sure we're not running out too far. 
but to be honest with you the with the concrete tiles that we're using they're pretty regular in their shape they're not like you're using some handmaids where there's an element of adjustment that's needed and then once you get to the valley end we get the cuts in place to uh, alter and to sort out the roof run so here once again we've got another few runs in we were doing about five or six runs of tiles and then making up the valley and this is a process of putting the tiles in and marking them and then cutting them with the angle grinder Claire is the master of the of the valley I am I am the glamorous assistant to be honest I just do all the all the cutting and the fetching and carrying she does she does the working out of the roof so then we're off to the angle grinder trimming off the edge And there you go. Looks lovely, doesn't it? Screws go in place. Like I say, we've screwed down about every fifth row. All the way along, screwing every tile just to stop them lifting, just in case there's strong winds. And then all the, all the edges were all screwed down along with the tiles either side of the valleys. So it's that laborious job, passing up and stacking all the tiles onto the roof they got mixed up front to back there's odd patches of uh, slightly different colour tiles but it's all part of the character all part of the interest in the roof and then you get further and further apart and it's further and further to reach with the tiles and so it gets more and more awkward. But once again, it's just a matter of clearing down, sweeping them off, having a little rest every so often, <laughs> having a chat about what we're going to do next or how we're going to progress with the roof, as always. And then cracking on, so another five rows up. Can see the tiles have already stacked up there so Claire can crack on on the high point I'm stacking them up this end ready for getting the other side of the window so there is a plan just doesn't always look like it I think at this point we're waiting for the flashing kit for the roof light or the Velux window there which we just ordered so we sort of made our way round it leaving some space so that we could finish that off later so you can see we've got a sort of dead straight staggered line there to the right of the roof light and then tiles stacked above it ready to go as and when but it is back breaking you're sitting on the sort of 45 degree of the roof. Anybody that does this full time, it's a, it's a tough old job. Sitting on the 45 degree, bending, reaching sort of down to your feet and everything else. So this is the other side of the small roof that sticks out the front. Just filling in the gaps. But exactly the same process. We've got the valley going up. Do the edge in and then fill in the gaps in between, keeping all the tiles as whole as possible. And then you do the cuts on the valley. So this was measured out so that we could actually get up onto the roof. So left ourselves a gap. And then from this point on we were left with going through the house and up through the cheeks of the dormer. 
So flashing kits arrived. And the tinware can go on around the VLUX window. I say I call it a VLUX window. It's not actually VLUX, it was Keyline, but nevertheless, similar, similar sort of thing. So building up the tiles and there's tin soakers that go in and get fixed down and screwed to the edge of the frame. Checking we're doing it right. Making sure it's gonna work, make sure it's gonna, not gonna, not gonna uh, leak. And then the apron fits on the top and that diverts the water round. And then we can fill in the gap. And then the massive benefit of the dormer being there is you've got somewhere to work from, somewhere to stack some materials, not too much obviously. So window back in, just in time for the house dorm. So the ridges need their ridge tiles. The main roof is going to have a ventilated ridge or a dry ridge uh, so we can put ventilation through the roof and through the flat roof. This part of the front doesn't need to be because uh, of the ventilation that's provided by the other. So we're just screwing down the top tiles and then it gets malted, the ridge tile gets malted into place. As you can see, I am uh, not a professional in these matters, but uh, but it gets the job done. So there you can see, ridges in place, and we start working on the rest of the tiles to close up that last gap there. So once again, Claire's on the case with the technical bits. Getting those last tiles cut and put in around the valleys. And then we're back with more ridge tiles. Trying to make it look as neat as I can. Trying to make it look tidy. Trying to make sure it's watertight. And then we close up the difference between the two. There's a piece of lead that sits underneath this tile and goes down just in case any water gets past the mortar joint around the tile just to protect the roof and that diverts the water underneath and out. So that's it. So we didn't get any footage of this bit, but this is the uh, small roof Claire cracked on and got this done. Small roof up the side of the dormer. And we've got the soakers all in place there up against the concrete board that you see us doing on a previous video. But I'm here doing this part, which is the infill. So you put a sand and, some, sand and cement mix a multi mix in here just to waterproof all the edge and hold all the tiles together. So, pretty laborious sort of day's work on its own, just slowly but surely wedging in small amounts of mortar. At this point, we were trying to get all the jobs done that required the scaffolding, so. We were getting the tiling done on the main roof as much as possible and all around the edges that needed the scaffolding. This sort of job where you needed the scaffolding to stand on to be able to get it done. 
uh, but we did end up leaving and you'll see in a previous and in another video coming up uh, the lead work and uh, tiles around the chimney which we did leave at this point uh, mainly because we could work on that from the flat dormer roof and we don't need any scaffolding for it because we have a date for the windows to be fitted and because of that they don't want any scaffolding so we were sort of pushing to get all the jobs done that required the scaffolding with the idea of getting rid of that as soon as possible we've still got and you'll see that next week the flat roof to do at the rear the rear balcony flat roof uh, but we don't need any scaffolding for that so we could carry on with that without and so at that point that was when the, the uh, scaffolder came back and removed the scaffolding so as I get one ridge on the main roof it closes it up for another week I uh, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again on the next one <laughs>